So gardening is something that I really want to get into. So this week I made this raised garden bed. I made it raised not only because I live on mostly rock here, but also so that whenever I'm tending it, I won't have to kill my knees and back. When doing the design process, I built in some drawers for tool storage, basket, maybe some hat, fertilizer, who knows. And a feature I really like is a submergible self-watering irrigation system. So let's get into how I made this raised garden bed. Can we call it the ultimate raised garden bed? Totally. Is that a thing? I started off by flipping out the wings on my miter saw stand and cutting down the boards that will make up the front, back, and the two side panels. Since this is an outdoor project, I'm going with Western Red Real Cedar for the vast majority of the build, mainly because of its superior weather and rot resistant qualities, which of course makes it longer lasting. Next, I put a round over bit in my router table and gave all of the long edges a gentle rounding. This will take the boards from butting up to one another at a hard 90 and will soften the overall look. Here's a close up so you can see the difference. Hard 90 edges versus rounded over edges. It's a small detail, but in my opinion, it creates a drastically different look. Now, to make the side panels, I first cut some corner posts, if you will, and these will be used to attach the slats easily. Since this is an outdoor project, I'm using only type on three since it is a waterproof wood glue. I attached a bead on the post, then started attaching the side slats. After making sure it was square to the post, I would pre-drill, then attach it with screws. I finished with one side, then flipped it around and repeated on the other. Then of course, with two sides being needed for the planter, I finished with that one, then repeated to make a second. To attach the long boards that will make up the front and back, I set the two side panels on my shop floor, then tried to span the gap. Dang it. Oh, dang it. This did not work out as smoothly as I thought though. After killing my stubbornness, I grabbed a super jaws to stabilize one of the panels for me while attaching, and this solves everything. I once again laid down a bead of type on three, then repeated with pre-drilling and driving in screws. Since I'm gonna be adding drawers to utilize a lot of the wasted space under the bed, I left off some of the panels on the remaining side, and you'll see that more clearly later on. While attaching those other sides, let me talk to you about this video sponsor, which is a company called Sunday. I am very excited about this company because I want a good looking lawn, but I don't really know how to go about it. And Sunday is making it easy by delivering a customized nutrient rich formula right to my doorstep. All I had to do was enter in my home address on their website and I instantly got a free soil, climate and lawn analysis for my custom plan. In just a few days, I received my first of three shipments that's time for my climate specifically. Now I'm an absolute beginner with gardening and lawn care, well, other than mowing. I'm a great mower. It's not only easy and convenient though, Sunday's ingredients are organic and non-toxic and not having any of those nasty chemicals was a huge selling point for me. It really is an inexpensive solution to professional services. If you're like me and are interested in a great but convenient way to have a thriving lawn, then you can use the link down in the description and use the code APRIL20 at checkout and get $20 off your order. There's absolutely no commitment and you can cancel at any time. So I wanna say a big thank you to Sunday for improving my lawn and supporting what I do. Next was to add the trim to the corners. And I first attached some scraps to build up the post on this drawer area so that everything would be on the same level. Then it was as simple as cutting the boards to length, laying down more glue, and then nailing it in place. I went with nails here to avoid screw heads being shown. And it probably isn't obvious from this angle, but these trim boards also double as four legs for the planter. I set that aside and started a new work area right in front of it to assemble some simple framing structure that will allow me to add a deck as well as the drawers. I started by taking measurements of the inside of my planter, then cut some one by fours and some two by fours to length. Now, if you aren't wanting to add drawers, then placing these framing members isn't a big deal. But if you want drawers like me, then take your time to get these boards spaced evenly and squarely because they dictate the size of your drawers later on. Alrighty, now to fit it inside of the planter. Now I built it outside, then inserted it in just to avoid having screws on the outside of these slots. I shimmied it in place, then backed it out just slightly so that I could lay down some wood glue. You can see that I used a brad nailer here to clamp the boards in place while that glue had time to set up. Now that is off to a good start, I think. 
I absolutely love working with Western Red Cedar because of how lovely it is just as is. And there's a link down in the description if you'd like to find a dealer near you. All right, let's move on to adding a deck. I'm gonna be lining my planter with a pond liner, so I use plywood. However, if you're not gonna be lining yours, then a slatted design for this deck is another method. After cutting my deck to size and also cutting the corners to compensate for those corner posts, I dropped it in place. <laughs> I love getting it on the first try. With the deck in, I next added in some intermediate bracing on both the long sides of the planter just to prevent them from wanting to bow out. Now, I'm going to be trying out a submerged irrigation system. This is kind of like a soaker hose, but instead of being on top and constantly dripping water down, this is at the bottom for the roots of the plant to dip down and drink from. I made sure to get a fish safe plastic that is about six millimeters thick and I spread it inside of the planter. I used a staple gun to staple it down to the bottom and the corners, then worked my way up the sides and onto the top. Now, the very top lip is where I applied the most staples, actually. I placed one about every eight inches, probably. All right, now look at the camera and smile. Oh, come on, be a sport. All right, now to the top trim. These are also cut from cedar one by fours and are placed directly on top. I started by attaching the two longer sides and then the two shorter sides. When I went to place the two short sides, I didn't like how much rocking there was. So I quickly added in a scrap piece flush with the top slat to support it. Oh, and I also went back and duct taped over all of the bottom staples. Since I'm adding drawers in under it, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And that is the outside of the planter done. So let's move on to making this reservoir. I saw the idea in a magazine and they said to use a perforated drain tile with a fabric sleeve. It's a corrugated plastic hose that has perforations all around it. You can find this at any of the big box stores. The holes will allow water in and out, but the fabric will keep the soil out. Since it wants to still curl from being on its spool, I use some soil to weight it down and keep them in place. The idea is to cut multiple lengths to evenly space out across the bed. And in, in mine, which is three feet wide, I placed three lengths. In the middle one, I drilled a hole that fit a small length of PVC. This will be where I can fill up the reservoir with water. So it needs to be tall enough where it'll protrude from the soil once the planter is filled. Then on the opposite end, I punched a hole through the planter and also the hose to create a drain. So the way it works is you fill one reservoir from the fill tube. Once it gets full, the excess water seeps out and fills the other two. Once all three are full, then the excess water drains out of the planter through the drain port. Now, I actually got ahead of myself by putting the lines inside before making the drawer system. It will actually be much easier to install the drawers with the planter on its side. I first needed to make some hangers that will hang down from the framing members under the deck to give me something to attach sliders to. These are made from simple one by fours and I used my armor tool self-adjusting jig to drill a few pocket holes into each horizontal piece. And just a tip, whenever I'm done with my jig, I always take the time to loosen the collar so that it's ready to be set the next time I pull it out to use. On these hangers, I left one leg longer than the other and this will create a middle row of legs that will give support to not only the drawers, but also the deck. After I finished making the hangers, I attached the drawer slides. Now I went with metal drawer slides because they are under the deck, which has a liner in it. So I'm thinking that these will stay out of the weather and hold up really well. Next, I took the hangers and started attaching them to the planner. The important thing here is that they are square and in line with one another. However, I did double check them with my precision speed square before throwing in a few nails. I also double checked that I was attaching them in the correct orientation with that longer leg being in the center of the planter. I let that glue set up and moved over to making the drawers. I kept these at three quarter inch material since I had some left over from the deck. I cut all of the pieces needed to make up three drawers, then attach them. With those made, I attached the second portion of the drawer slide to the two sides, then mated the two together to slide the drawers in their place. I once again found this much easier to do with a planter on its side. Now I designed it so that the drawer faces will look like the slats above it. 
With that, I took a few measurements to compensate for the reveals on all sides, then cut them to length, rounded them over, and stuck them in place. And now it's really just the finishing touches. Let's go ahead and put some color and protection on it, shall we? I've had such a great experience before with General Finish's 450 Outdoor Stain. So that's what I chose to go with here. It's specially designed with an exterior rated pigment that will give you the durability to protect your project, but also has a resin system that provides great adhesion. It dries in just an hour or two and doesn't require a protective top coat. I used a roller to apply the 450, and this is in the cedar color, by the way, a paper towel to wipe off the excess, and then a dolly on either end to move this big box outside where it will live. Watch your totem. With it in the spot, it will get plenty of morning and early afternoon sun, but the porch will provide shade from the heat of the day and the evening sun. With the planter in its final resting spot, I filled in the rest of the planter with soil. It's worth noting that I went with soilless soil, which doesn't retain moisture and compact like regular soil does. Next, I grab my hose and use the fill tube to fill up those reservoirs. You know that they're full when water starts coming out of that drain tube. I am really looking forward to getting into gardening and seeing how this irrigation system works out. I've only heard good things about it from other gardeners. If you use the system, then please leave your experience down below so future viewers can read about it. Also, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the raised garden bed. Don't forget, if you want to build your own, I do have a set of plans and a link to everything I've used in the video down below. That's it for this one. I will see you on whatever I'm building next, guys.